A reading from the book of Genesis. In the course of the night, Jacob arose, took his two wives, with the two maidservants and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabuk. After he had taken them across the stream and had brought over all his possessions, Jacob was left there alone. Then some man wrestled with them until the break of dawn. When the man saw that he could not prevail over him, he struck Jacob's hip at its socket, so that the hip socket was wrenched as they wrestled. The man then said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. The man asked, what is your name? He answered, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be spoken of as Jacob, but, of, but as Israel, because you have contended with divine and human beings and have prevailed. Jacob then asked him, do tell me your name, please. He answered, why should you want to know my name? With that, he bade him farewell. Jacob named the place Penel. Because I have seen God face to face, he said, and my life has been spared. At sunrise, as he left Penuel, Jacob limped along because of his hip. That is why to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the sciatic muscle that is on the hip socket. And as much as Jacob's hip socket was struck at the, at the sciatic muscle. Verbum Domini. In justice I shall behold your face, O Lord. In justice I shall behold your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from my lips without deceit. From you let my judgment come, your eyes behold what is right. Though you test my heart, searching it in the night, though you try me with fire, you shall find no malice in me. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from their foes. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. I, in justice, shall behold your face. On walking, I shall be content in your presence. In Fobiscum et cum spiritu tu Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Mateum Gloria Tibi Domine A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus, and when the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Never, nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, he drives out demons by the prince of demons. 
Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Verbum Domini. As Christians, we're naturally attracted to that time when our Lord went about to all the towns and villages preaching and how wonderful that time was. We also imagine that we would have been among those who believed when we encountered him, not of those who rejected Jesus, who ascribed his works and his words to other sources. And it's hard to believe that anyone would claim that the words and deeds of the most beautiful of children of men, Jesus Christ, could be attributed to anyone other than God. And yet when we view the fullness of a relation, we view simply the crucifix, we realize that while grace is given to all that they may be be saved, not all receive the gift of faith. And it's not that God's not giving the gift of faith. They don't, we don't say yes. We have to, and we have free will to receive that. So the gift of faith is offered in every encounter with the living God when he calls and reveals his love to us. And in our weakness, we are expecting the Jacob wrestling with an angel moments. We look for miracles or big moments to be the foundation of our our belief and blessing of our life. So the good God, however, will not be put to the test and need not. That the miracle grounding our personal salvation is first of all life. God has in love created us for love. That his love precedes any good that we might, might do and is the highest foundation, uh, and is the highest good, that that good is found in him willing us simply to be. And this is our security, the very fact which should be unassailable, that every person is created, given life, at the moment of conception, and endowed with inalienable rights and expressions of love from the Creator, who has called him or her to be. In the book of Genesis, we find Jacob wrestling with the angel who reveals the face of God, his presence and blessing. The Lord reveals himself not as an impersonal force, but as the God who intervenes, who is willing to wrestle with man, Our God enters into human history, our personal story, in order to care for us and bless us, to save us from sin and death, to save us from following the path away from him. God keeps his promises. Sometimes in this holy relationship as frail creature to our creator, we are like Jacob who receives the name Israel, meaning one who contends or strives with God. We are created with a desire to know God, to see his face, to be close to him. Unlike Jacob, we usually give up when the wrestling gets tough, sometimes as a result of severe pain in our life, signified by um, the, the popping his hip out of the socket, um, whether that pain is personal or, or someone we love. But faith 
is a spiritual battle, a challenge, even when in the face of so many testaments to God and his care for us. There's a beautiful section on the battle of prayer in the Catechism, beginning with paragraph 2725. Prayer is both a grace and a determined response on our part. It always presupposes effort. The great figures of prayer in the Old Covenant before Christ, as well as the Mother of God, the saints, and he himself all teach us this. Prayer is a battle. Against whom? Question. Against ourselves and against the wiles of the tempter who does all that he can to turn man away from prayer, away from union with God. We pray as we live, because we live as we pray. If we do not want to act habitually according to the spirit of Christ, neither can we pray habitually in his name. The spiritual battle of the Christian's new life is inseparable from the battle of prayer." End quote. Ultimately, the battle is not against God. God is constantly giving us grace, but it's against those things that would prevent us from living totally in him, from total confidence in him, our frail understanding, impatience, the mentality of the world, dryness, lack of faith, and one of the most prevalent, laziness or lack of vigilance. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And this little, sentence, we pray as we live, because we live as we pray, that also is super important, because we often think it doesn't matter how we live. You know, if I'm living, and I, I pray I never live uh, in sin, but uh, if we're out of the state of grace, you know, because of mortal sin, we're, we're habitually in mortal sin, uh, we're not going to see God. So Jesus says, blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. If we don't have purity of heart because our, our actions are um, not just in chastity above all, chastity has a, a unique way to blur and prevent us from seeing God. But in all, all those obstacles, not living the law of God, we won't have a beautiful and fulfilling prayer life. So those who say that you know, they look for, for God in all the wrong places. <laughs> so they're using other forms of prayer that aren't Christian and they're not living a Christian life. God, yes, God reveals himself at times to those not living in a state of grace in order to convert them to himself, in order to convert them away from the path leading away from him. But our life is, our prayer life is going to be improve as our life improves and they're not two separate things they come together you know they that the, as we pray we receive grace to live a good life as we live a good life we say yes to that grace our prayer life increases now does that mean it won't become a battle or remain a battle no so uh, hopefully that makes sense <laughs> so it, encountering god is a gift, it's a grace, but it's also a task, that faith in God is a grace freely offered by the one who reveals himself. The truth about who God is and how he has been revealed to us most perfectly in Christ, that he has shown his face to us, this has to be taught to us. Jesus is the one sent who reveals God's face to us, his loving care, his desire to save us from our sins and to give us new life, his own life he pours out upon us. God is faithful to his children and his love always precedes us, lighting up the way, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He himself shows us, teaches us how to pray. He still walks with us.